joins from the second session, uh, which is on building a Microsoft Teams team uh, chat space to manage uh, your project. So uh, just before we get started, so this session is basically about exploring some of the project management elements, uh, in particular around the document management aspects of it, because that tends to be the larger part of the project management side of things. But also we will be exploring around some of the ways to communicate with the uh, project team members. And so it is a, uh, as for the development track, but very lightweight development. A lot of it is just out of the box, but it's kind of really uh, understanding the full capabilities of Microsoft 365 services that can all basically come into Microsoft Teams. And depending on which organization you come from or what kind of projects you work on, uh, everyone's definition tends to vary uh, as to what project exactly it is. Uh, in my opinion, and I guess in a lot of people's minds, is that as long as there is a start and end date, uh, to me that is a project. Uh, otherwise, it's just a work package or some kind of a work stream uh, that you're working on uh, that needs to be uh, satisfied with some kind of an outcome. Uh, but nevertheless, we will cover in this session uh, in terms of what it just really takes to have a decent project chat space uh, just to get things done. Uh, just before I kind of uh, go into uh, kind of myself uh, around this furthermore, is uh, I want to just say uh, thanks to the sponsors, uh, in particular VM, uh, as well as other track sponsors there. Without them, uh, this, some of these events would not even take place. And so we're really grateful for them to be here. Uh, if you haven't already or haven't come across them, then please do uh, kind of uh, take a look at them. Also, please join M365 Chicago in supporting Chicago Public Schools uh, through the Children First Fund. Uh, there's the kind of QR codes uh, and you'll probably see a lot of these uh, slides throughout the day uh, as well. So uh, with that, uh, there by myself, uh, I'm Chirag Patel. I uh, live and work in London, UK, uh, techchirag.com is my website uh, to access all the uh, events I speak at, uh, as well as some of the other uh, useful blog posts that I have in there. Um, I'm an office apps and services MVP. It just, just generally means that I speak at a lot of these events uh, and really share my experiences uh, through working with various Microsoft partners, uh, as well as end user organizations. Uh, tend to be covering uh, deployments of SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, uh, Microsoft 365 in general, uh, as well as configurations and enhancing the existing business investments uh, through Power Platform uh, uh, experiences on that. I also uh, am an organizer for a meetup group in the UK here, uh, M365 UK, and it runs every month on Wednesdays uh, in the middle of the month. And also been around for about 20 odd years. Try to like to keep up with the uh, with the IT industry as well as some of the certifications, uh, just to really uh, embrace uh, what there is to offer with Microsoft 365 uh, to really just uh, you know what solves the, the business problems. Uh, in my spare time, if I do get any, these are the uh, events I've spoken at. Uh, there's links on this, so my slides will be available even after this session as well. I tend to make them available straight away. Uh, if you haven't come across, there are a lot of events that take place, so do take, take a look, uh, explore those. Uh, and there is obviously a lot of uh, varieties of topics that's happening around Microsoft Teams as well as Microsoft 365 uh, and services. Okay, so uh, we'll kind of just cover through the brief uh, slides that I have, and then the rest of it is just a demo-based session. So, uh, for you know, this is a slide you may have come across so many times in so many events, uh, but nevertheless, you know, Microsoft Teams, as Microsoft put it, is just simply a hub for teamwork in Microsoft 365. Yes, it's the it's the daily uh, application that opens up on our desktops. Um, I think about six months ago, you know around 75 million active daily active users. Now, I think according to sometime last week, uh, it's around about 115 daily active users. Uh, and that's probably because of the conditions uh, we're in this year. Um, but most of the organizations that I find uh, when I kind of come across them, uh, yes, they start off with Microsoft Teams, 
Uh, but there are so many other independent services that they may not have thought about how to switch those on or even how to go about configuring those things. But in essence, these four things that it does, you know, you got your chat, your meetings, uh, you got your collaboration aspects of it, which is a big part of SharePoint uh, in that regard. But also being able to kind of, you know, work through your apps, third party uh, connectors and so on. And then being able to also customize uh, the actual Microsoft Teams itself. Um, and then with that comes with the wrapper of security and compliance uh, that not just you know works with the files but also with your messages, uh, chat messages, and so forth. And so when you look at the actual uh, creating a team, you know, a fairly simple process for any user in the organization. Uh, and you know, just recently when we had a, a feature just rolled out, you know, where we're now able to create Microsoft Teams from a set of templates that we have available and. You know, in particular, when you look at Microsoft, uh, so if you look at the actual project template, in essence, all you're getting is uh, four channels. Uh, general tends to be there every time anyways. Uh, and then you've got two apps, uh, OneNote and, and, the, and the Wiki, which Wiki I don't really use that much, don't really see why it's even there in the first place. But nevertheless, from a project manager or even a project member who wants to spin up a new team, then you kind of got just the basic channels in there. It doesn't really come with anything popular. And as some of you may use Microsoft Teams, you'll be aware of that already. But the, the real challenge comes from is exactly what we do with the project management documents that we have. And yes, you know, that is a big part of it. You've got your design document, discovery, implementation, all kinds of documents. And depending on where you are in your folks who, who love working with files, who who love to keep everything on their desktops, uh, or even simply just use OneDrive. Uh, and that's probably okay from a OneDrive perspective, that when you do work with any particular files, you want to probably draft it up first of all, and then go through some kind of reviews, sharing through a couple of colleagues, and then being able to eventually move it, uh, move those documents in this eventual place somewhere in SharePoint. Uh, and when we say SharePoint, you know, that's in respect to the Microsoft Teams project, because every team we create, it creates a SharePoint site uh, in the background anyway, because that's where the files are stored. So it makes perfect sense that, you know, the, all the project files eventually stay in, in SharePoint. And then within SharePoint, you can go through the various edits, reviews and all that. So, so we'll look at some of those kind of examples of how you can kind of, you know, enrich the SharePoint uh, content uh, for in particular on the files itself. But again, you know, we're looking at the, from the files perspective, again, you're not limited by just using what you get in your documents uh, as a, uh, the, the source of where the files live for your channels, but you can create your additional document libraries to store various other types of documents uh, as opposed to the default document directory, uh, not document library. And so, and so just to be clear here that, you know, within SharePoint itself, you know, whether that's your team or your team files that you've got created within your channels itself, all those files re relate to your Microsoft Teams projects uh, chat space you have, uh, or any other type of teams you may have. And of course, the underlying uh, foundation service around this is Microsoft 365 Group. So, Everything that you work within, it's all taken care of by that membership as do the owners of that team, uh, as well as the members, and even perhaps the guests as well. So where you have that, if, you, if your organization allows that, then at least you can invite guests uh, to collaborate in your Microsoft project team there as well. And then any ad hoc team chats you have, uh, and you're swapping those files within that, then those files don't stay in SharePoint they stay within your OneDrive. So it's always a risky element, some of things where if your colleague happens to leave and there are a lot of people coming and going these days in the organizations. So if all of those files live in OneDrive, then you will find that all your team chat, your ad hoc files will be in those OneDrive. So you wanna make sure that they stay within the project environment of that SharePoint. And then of course, you know, the permissions that you have within that is only unique to those members who have shared those files. When it comes to SharePoint, and there is that thought, you know, where, you know, if, if we can use Teams, why do we want to use SharePoint? And yes, that's probably true in some cases, 
uh, especially if you're a small organization where all you really care about is working with your files. Uh, but if you then kind of progress into the larger organizations, then you really want to take advantage of that SharePoint because it does offer the way to post your news uh, or even web pages through the pages, site pages, uh, as well as being able to create any types of lists uh, that you want to do. And obviously, we have Microsoft Lists, uh, which is built on SharePoint list as well. So you were able to then still work with those lists, being able to create your risks and issues, which that example as well. And then obviously you can create multiple sites uh, within that and being able to also customize that whole SharePoint site uh, through the web parts and everything else. Kind of a very, uh, if you like, you know, very quick tour in terms of when it comes to working with that project site that's within the part of the Teams, which we want to bring some of those experiences inside the Microsoft Teams chat space, then what you got here essentially is being able to kind of brand your homepage, being able to create multiple document libraries, being able to store your files, and really kind of add your Microsoft Teams team if you're creating your SharePoint site first, uh, and then being able to turn on that external sharing if your organization permits uh, to be able to share that particular project uh, and the files uh, and everything else that goes with it, the chats, conversations to the external members. And then you kind of just kind of post your news pages, being being able to build your status reports, if you like, through using the news pages, uh, being, also being able to synchronize your files to your desktop, uh, not just channel basis, but at the document library level. So potentially you could be synchronizing quite a lot of files, depending on the, on the space you have available. Uh, but ideally, you only want to synchronize what you really need to work with. So it really helps to, to organize your project structure in a way that's more beneficial for the team. Uh, and then being able to create your list and then being able to also fur furthermore enhance uh, with the look and feel and also add some rich functionality through Power Apps uh, and Power Automate uh, building flows. So kind of really the basic building blocks you have to be able to create a rich project chat space but then also being able to work with Planner uh, as well as Group Calendar from the uh, Outlook as well. One thing I haven't really mentioned here is, is the project online, project for the web. Uh, and whilst those are kind of, if you like, premium subscription-based products, uh, one thing you can do uh, is to have that roadmap functionality. So again, with the roadmap, if you're using project online, then you do need a license for that, but the rest of the team can actually view only for that roadmap uh, and there's a connector for that as well to be able to add in the team. So just before we go into the demo itself, it's worth kind of remembering here that you know in terms of for some of the folks who may be familiar with SharePoint, uh, we'll kind of you know second to that that you can build kind of a rich document management systems and content types tends to be the building block for it. And essentially, uh, all content type does is being able to bring an item together and being able to add additional attributes to that type of information, being able to then classify it uh, and have that enhance your search experiences on that. So with the documents are things, yes, you can have your design documents, high level design, training documents, uh, you name it, and then feed your templates to it so that every time you create a new document, then at least you've got the right template and then the right metadata that goes with that type of document. Um, same thing can be done with your project items, uh, such as risks, issues. You may want to even have uh, project dependencies as well in that. It doesn't really matter as long as you kind of give a thought as to how you plan that structure out, then you can create all this within your SharePoint site and then being able to then classify your information properly. And there's a link over there as well, so it gives you a good how to, in terms of how to go about uh, doing this. So let's just jump into the uh, the demo. So I'm using a uh, fictitious company, Contoso uh, Electronics, uh, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Uh, so this is my kind of Teams chat space area. Uh, I've got a few teams here, but I know one of them, uh, the two teams I'll be concentrating here today is the Chirac project site and mark a project team here. So if I go into uh, the Chirac project site, first look, 
you know, there's few channels I've got, and depending on how you want to do this, but if you've got a small organization, which you probably want to just kind of create maybe a few channels, uh, depending on what type of project you want to do, of course, and you can kind of make up your structure as you go along um, and have those conversations, everything else around that. The second part of the project is, and this is the example that you get from part of this demo, is you got another project here, which is called Digital Assets Web, go to market plan, uh, and different types of channels within that. Again, you can have structured channels if you wanted to, depending on how you want to deploy those templates as a Teams, uh, and, there are, and those are very bespoke custom solutions if you want to have a project look like in a certain way. And then I've got a project from template here, so... Uh, Uh, do you want it to be there? So this is the project from the template which I created uh, earlier, which basically, like I was saying, just gives you a few channels in there, uh, announcements, planning, um, resources, and everything else. And then you can create really a content there. I'm just going to jump back to the general uh, channel there. So if I go in here, uh, my in project side, I've got a few tabs here. You know, I've got the project overview issue tracker and risk issues, these are you know, tends to be the common elements. Uh, and then you can create additional things as well. So I've got here, uh, just to give you two examples, the differences between using the metadata uh, and the content types within that. So there's a few examples there to cover off. But if I look at first off the uh, project overview as a tab, and what you see here is essentially a SharePoint homepage uh, that has got multiple web parts within those. Uh, so typically, you have, say, something like a, a project status report, which is kind of a SharePoint news post element of it. You get something that's like a, a site activity, which basically just keeps not just the documents, but also if there is a group conversation going on uh, and any kind of activity happening throughout that project, then at least you get that uh, within your uh, SharePoint site as a web part on this homepage, uh, links web part. And then you've got another document library here as well, which is exactly the same in structure, which is the folders, which represents as those channels inside your project team. And that's obviously you know, just the starter. You can obviously build this more uh, and make it more richer. So if we kind of go into uh, the, the SharePoint side itself, then obviously that gives you a lot more richer. And then obviously you've got your menu within the SharePoint side and so forth. Uh, but if you look at the two examples that I want to cover off here is the project documents. So, you know, whilst you can, you know, create your folders in the way you want it to, uh, and this particular example is using the content type. So I've got my content types here for every files that belongs to a, a high-level design or a training document, uh, or even just a generic project document. So it doesn't really matter as long as your users understand that what kind of structure that they can do that. And so the benefit there is that if I, for example, go and click on the uh, I select the training document and go to the information pane there, then here I've got uh, only you know one content type uh, attribute itself, the name and title, which is what you get anyways. Uh, but if I go and click on the uh, high level design document, then here I've got the extra uh, field here, reviewed date, and the reviewed date doesn't appear for the training document. So here through the use of content types, I can actually select what to, which attributes to show for which particular content type. Um, and that's useful because you probably want to enhance your search experiences in that. So we'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, in fact, let's do that now. So if I go into my uh, project site here, I'm just going to the homepage, uh, homepage site here. And if you look at, type in, say, training there, and I know there will be probably a lot more documents that show up here, but one of the documents there was process how to. Now, in the title itself, there is no training mentioned there at all, uh, but that's coming up in the, in, the, in the rankings there because the content type and the actual uh, the, the attributes to that is associated with this content type itself. So it's kind of just promoting your search results uh, by through the use of metadata and content types within that. If I go back, uh, to the document library again. Um, and so, so that's 
that's one that's the, the one with the content types but the argument would be as well that do we really have to use content types uh, not symmetrical work to be able to uh, tie in that obviously you get your benefit of having your templates within that but you may want to have a, another document library say for example um, in this case upload the project documents with metadata but in here you'll just simply create your columns and then just give the values to it and then being able to store your metadata and then yes with the metadata you can then obviously work with the security and compliance side of things in order to have some uh, retention policies for example uh, associated with that it uh, really doesn't matter there's endless possibilities on that but as long as from a instead of using folders then at least you got a good way of actually using this here to be able to uh, add a group them you know by that particular type of documents and everything else so really doesn't matter using the views and everything else that you get as part of your SharePoint site within that. So if we take a look at quickly how we build that is if I go into uh, site contents, which is the web, uh, the site map for this SharePoint site. And if I then go into uh, site settings, and we're going to be focusing here just on the, this small area here. So that's your web designer galleries. That's all we really care about. And so typically you would want to create your site columns first and you get a lot out of the box anyways. Uh, but I've created a few uh, and document type, which is what we had a look at just now, which is where all my values reside. And then I've got a few additional ones here. So that review date that I had that appeared in the HLD, uh, high level design document type and not in the training. So it doesn't matter at that point, at this point, we just want to create our necessary columns that we want to do to be able to apply into our documents. So that's one area you can create your columns from. The other thing then you want to do the second stage is to then basically work with your content types. So within here, uh, and you can see at the, the top over here, I've got my few content types that I've created. And if I go into high level design, then within there, I've actually explicitly uh, put in the review date as an attribute to be able to store that. And it's optional. I could have made it mandatory so that every time the document's in there, it has to have a value. So I've got that kind of flexibility within that. And then once I've done that, then I can just go into my uh, project document library itself. And then through the library settings, because every library you can actually configure things in the way you want to. And then within here, uh, I've got my necessary document types that I want to display so that when I create a new project document, I can have a choice to choose either project, HLD or implementation document. And so that's kind of really uh, a very quick way of doing uh, your kind of uh, uh, having your documents classified in that sort of way. So if I just go back now to the content types uh, document, and then if I was to create a new document, then I've got my necessary options there, uh, and then I can just go ahead and create my, my documents within that itself. So that's kind of a very quick way of looking at the document content types. The, the other thing we want to look at is uh, around the issues, uh, issue and is, uh, risks and issues. So there's kind of a couple of school of thoughts here. Uh, Microsoft List, which kind of became available recently, has got the issue tracker template. Uh, and that's probably just as, as good as to, to go with that, um, to go with that. But also you've got uh, the other example they can use is the, the risks and issues, if you like. So that's, again, just a, a normal SharePoint list you have. But here I'm using content types again in order to identify what's the risk and uh, what's the issue. The list you see here is just to give you an idea. Uh, in reality, you would never create a list in this way because you, you've got things here called item type. So this one is demonstrating the, the use of metadata. Uh, and then the other example you have in this same list is the content type. So again, I've got my content types based on the list that I created earlier from the, uh, the web designer galleries, then I can actually swap as to which way I want to do that. But if I was to click on new, then that will make it very worthwhile in my teams to be able to categorize my items, whether it's a risk or an issue. In the same manner, I don't get that behavior for the documents. So for that, I have to go in SharePoint to be able to pull that content type, whether it's HLD or training. But hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of the use of content types uh, around that in terms of making use of the lists itself. 
And then I can obviously not, uh, format this, you know, using the format current view, the, the list formatting. I can manage my rules if I wanted to have conditions around that. I've only got one condition here, uh, which basically says that if item type is equal to issue, then show this like uh, in, in the blue background. So I can do all that kind of list formatting and everything else, uh, and just to kind of enrich that experience uh, as I go with that. So hopefully that's kind of given you a flavor how to kind of switch between SharePoint and also Microsoft Teams. So much of the plumbing that you have around content types, the site columns, it has to be done within SharePoint. But once you've kind of got that structure in place, then you're kind of good to go with that in terms of managing your documents and so forth. So there's that document library here that we have. Uh, so this is using the standard uh, SharePoint document library as a tab you get, such as this one. And then within that, I've got this view, but I don't get the view of creating the new content types uh, within that. So if I, if I do that, then I'm just getting my default uh, new, new itself. So we'll, we'll see that experience. And, and maybe I think uh, uh, based on my team environment here, um, there might be other bespoke elements that you can, we can do on that. And then this is the same one as that, projects with metadata, same sort of thing there again. Um, the, the, the advantage here is that obviously I can bring my uh, other uh, metadata within here as well. So, but again, just to give you an idea, you can bring additional document libraries within this Teams area as well. So not everything has to be stored inside a single document library for all your documents. Yeah. Okay, so the other element I want to look at is uh, the status reports. So I think this, the planning essentially and the, and the status report itself. So when we look at the, uh, for this one, I'm going to switch to a different project, uh, market project team. So if I go into a channel here, go to market plan, then within here, I've got a few tabs, uh, but one of them is the market project plan. And this is using planner uh, straight out of the box. And again, you can, uh, you know, you can define your own uh, work streams or, or buckets, whatever the terminology you want to use, being able to then you know, create your tasks and, and everything else. And that's fine if you've got multiple plans, then you would obviously head over to the Planner app and see all your multiple plans within that. But what if, from a status report perspective, you want to bring some of these elements to it, and for sure we can use the web part for it, but also you may want to include other additional elements on that news page itself. And so the way we go about doing that is, I'm just going to come back to the general uh, channel here, and I can go into here and just create simply my SharePoint news. So if I click on the, uh, the SharePoint uh, tab, and I can have either in, in display the individual news report, uh, it's uh, in the status report, or I can have multiple news uh, in there as well. So I'm going to choose just the news uh, content. So if I have multiple news items, then I can display that. So this is pulling through that existing news uh, status report that I have, uh, and then I can go and create new uh, items within here as well. Again, if I wanted to bring that news elements within that, then I can go into my SharePoint pages, uh, or I can simply just go to my SharePoint uh, project site here that I have. So in this case, I'm going to uh, go to market, project, which looks similar, and that's the exact same report that comes into the team. Uh, but I can just go and create a new post again here. And here I've got a choice, either use my default templates that I get, the built-in ones, or I can create a new one as well. So I'm going to use the report template that I created, which is fairly uh, easy to use. If I go into my project report template, very uh, kind of lightweight template that I have. So the news title itself, okay, let's create a page from that. And we call this week two status report. Uh, I can still uh, modify all this content that I wanted to. I've got one file in there. But I might include, in this case, the planner uh, information about the, uh, the, the status itself. So instead of using this latest report, some text here, I'll kind of just quickly uh, add the planner. So just 
planner and then once I've got my planner here I can choose uh, either use the existing plan because I've got multiple plans inside this project team I'll probably just use the like a project plan uh, but instead of displaying the board then I'll just display uh, all the charts within that so I can kind of make this on a weekly basis uh, because there might be some additional uh, the additional things that I might want to include. So week status, week two status report. And then if I got my references there and I'll probably move this one to the top. That's not what I want to do. So then we can just bring that back to the top here and, and just uh, please review and comment below on the page. And I can have all the other things in there as well. So it doesn't really matter as long as it's a brief text as to what the, uh, the report is about, and that's fine. But I can then just go ahead and uh, uh, just go ahead and post that as the news. <coughs> Excuse me. And that way I can do my status reports. Now, I know most of the projects that I work with, most of the clients, uh, they tend to keep everything within the app. They use PowerPoint uh, as a way of reporting on a weekly basis. Uh, they have Excel spreadsheets where they capture all their risks, issues, even the plan, all in one Excel spreadsheet. And this obviously, chat space kind of almost puts the Excel away. You can still use Excel file in your chat space there. But the idea being here is that Instead of people having to chase up individual, you have this way the teams to kind of coming into this place itself to be able to grab all that information there. So if I refresh this, uh, reload this tab, then obviously I'll see uh, the second week, uh, week to status report appear. So this way, at least from a team perspective, uh, you can still access your status reports as well as being able to uh, access your documents within that as well. If I'm going to uh, if I create another tab here and we use lists here, so again, this is something growing and there's obviously, uh, you know, this is just going to grow and become even more richer. But at the moment, you've all got, obviously you've got the, uh, the uh, uh, issue tracker, so I can either create a new list uh, or I can just use the existing list itself. So I'll probably create a new list. And at the moment, I've got this few templates, uh, but I can use the uh, issue tracker here. And the good thing about this is that at least, uh, you know, kind of excuse me, big view of what this will look like with formatting and everything else. I'll go ahead and use that template and I can just call this uh, one, your screen, and then create my issue tracker that way. So if I don't want to use, if I don't want to go into SharePoint, uh, being able to create all those lists and content types. I can just go and use Microsoft lists and you can see that it creates me all that, all those headings in there. And then this way I can then just go and add my new uh, issue item itself. So uh, I'll send to that maybe Megan <coughs> and I can just go ahead and um, build my issues uh, within that itself. So it kind of just gives you kind of you know good uh, just quick overview as to how you can bring various elements uh, of that Microsoft 365. So you've got your Microsoft lists, you've got your SharePoint, and then you've got your Microsoft Teams itself. So again, with SharePoint, we use kind of various elements around content types, the news posts, uh, being able to bring those project elements to together. Um, so I just wanted to kind of just uh, go back on the slides. I'm just conscious of time-wise as well. So I kind of really just wanted to make sure that, you know, uh, you know, take advantage of content types. They are here to stay. Uh, and obviously there's a lot of modernization going on in the background. Uh, but also, you know, we looked at the project status pages as well. So that was a good one as well. But yeah, again, when you try and split the whole thing around in terms of where you store your list, your issues and everything else, then obviously, you know, Microsoft List is, is the way forward uh, for that. But hopefully this kind of session, there's obviously a lot to cover uh, from a project perspective. And yes, we could have even used Power BI for reporting, 
uh, and that's obviously a good tool to use. Uh, but what I want to really cover off here is that there is certainly various, you know, many organizations who use projects in, in different ways. So this is kind of hopefully the session's been kind of giving you that starter, if you like, to kind of light up your project using Microsoft Teams, using just the out of the box experiences that you have uh, within that. So um, I think with that, I just wanted to say, you know, a big thanks uh, to the organizers, uh, as well as you, the attendees, uh, for, for being here. And so really appreciate that. And obviously, uh, you know, feel free to please uh, 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 provide the feedback, uh, as well as for the event. Uh, and really trust that uh, you enjoy the uh, the rest of the day. And I just want to say a big thanks to all the organizers, in particular, Craig, Paul, Jay, uh, everyone involved in this team. So, yeah. Uh, you know, any questions, I'm, I'm happy to take them. I want to make sure that uh, we get through that as well. So I'm just going to uh, look at the chat window here and see if there are any questions. But uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks. So, do, do, do. OK, so in the meeting chat, there's nothing there. Uh, Don't be shy. You can ask questions. So there's, uh, there's one, I'm not sure if it's a question or a statement. Uh, your project report as a new will be, will not be static. Uh, so it depends how it is. So if I choose that particular status report and, and the, the project week two project report that I created, I can make that as a template if I wanted to, um, or I can just use the default template that I had earlier on. I'm not sure if that answers a question there, but um, that, that's the only way you can attempt that one. And yes, absolutely right. The, the planner web part will change from week to week. So you're absolutely right. So if you was to go back to the week one, then at least um, that status report will not be static. It will, it will be dynamic. I think this kind of just to prove the point here, depending on, uh, it's, it's more of a culture change. So uh, here's how my thinking is that typically, project manager likes to send every week or, or every two weeks or whenever it is that frequency, the project report. The idea here is that we want to make this as dynamic as possible. So really there shouldn't be, uh, in my view is that there shouldn't be week one or week two project reports. Uh, from a status perspective, there should be just the one place to look at the project status. So it shouldn't be determined by any kind of frequency uh, in terms of that way. Now that's obviously harder to absorb as a change when we want to display at any given time what's the status of report because not forgetting that all we want to be satisfied here with is the outcome of that project. So uh, yeah, in that respect, obviously that's going to be dynamic even if you was to go back to the week one. But the idea is eventually you want to kind of stop writing those project status reports and then have that dynamic uh, content all the time really so that at least you know what's left to do to complete the project. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think um, that's pretty much me. I'll just make uh, I'll make way for the next uh, speaker. Uh, but I think I just want to say one more time, thanks and thanks for the questions. Uh, and then. Uh, I have a second session later on today at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Chicago uh, Central Time there. So uh, hopefully you can join me in that in the Microsoft 365 productivity track. Okay, uh, Raf, thanks for uh, uh, thanks for having me and uh, thanks for moderating the